So hello and welcome to yet another episode of Top 10s. I'm your interim host, Carl Small, and today we're talking about 10 valuable patterns that were released to the world. And as with all videos here on Top 10s, this one is based on a script sent to us by a member of our writing team. That being Ian Forty, whose links to socials can be found below alongside my own. But let's get to it. When you have a great idea, a patent can help you preserve and secure it so that the world knows it's yours. Of course, not everyone wants a patent for something they created. For instance, Coca-Cola has never patented their original formula because they were afraid that someone could check out the patent and reverse engineer their own Coke after the patent ran out in 20 years. Instead, they've kept it as a trade secret so nobody would ever know how it's made. Something similar happened with WD-40, which was similarly never patented for basically the same reason. There are, however, less selfish reasons to forego a patent as well. Sometimes a person or company finds value in releasing the patent so anyone in the world can use it for free. Why would anyone do that? Because, rare though it may be, altruism is a thing that actually exists. At least, sometimes. Or, in the case of this video, these 10 times. Speaking of which, number 10. Volvo gave away the patent for the three-point safety belt. In the modern world, it's hard to imagine a car without seat belts, but they weren't always in cars, and even after being introduced, they weren't mandatory to use. In fact, laws making seat belt use mandatory in the 1980s were met by angry protests from people who hated the idea. And one of my favorite Darwin Award-style stories from history is that one of the chief proponents of that protest died in a car crash. Um, uh, that the forensic experts examining the body said likely wouldn't have occurred if they'd worn a seatbelt. And remarkably, seatbelts had been around for decades prior to laws making them a requirement for cars. In fact, Volvo had patented the three-point safety belt, the one most of us are familiar with that goes like over here and across there, in, in 1959. And the engineer behind the three-point seatbelt was Niels Bolin, and his invention is quite literally in almost every single modern car in existence. You can only imagine how valuable that would be, especially considering that over 92 million cars are made every single year. And Bolin, to its credit, was not a man who wanted to exploit a life-saving invention, and in 1959 only Volvo had this technology. Bolin and Volvo gave the technology freely to the entire car industry, and anyone who wanted to make use of it and other car companies took full advantage. This life-saving technology has literally saved millions of lives as a result. Except for, you know, the aforementioned douchebag was like, I don't want to wear a seatbelt. They got theirs in the form of what might be one of the clearest examples of karmic justice to exist. Speaking of cars, Toyota released 24,000 royalty-free patents for electric car-related technology. As much as we think of automakers as the biggest companies in the world that rake in billions, and they are, they do have random moments of goodness, like with the Volvo story above. Or previously, it's above in the script, but previously in the video. But they're not the only one. There's a modern push to keep looking towards electric vehicles and alternative energy transportation. Not only does gasoline pollute, it's simply not an infinite resource, so one day we'll have to do without it whether we like it or not. And car manufacturers liking to make profit like the idea of that whole infinite thing. So towards the goal of creating better electric cars and related technologies, Toyota released a stunning 24,000 royalty-free patents related to electric car technology for anyone to use use. This happened in 2019, but five years earlier. Elon Musk, who, yeah, I guess we've got credit for this one, and Tesla did the same thing, sharing their patents with the world to keep the electric car pushing forward. Of course, things are not as full of sunshine as they seem. In this situation, as part of the Tesla pledge, it means that if another company uses Tesla patents, Tesla is free to use that company's patents as well. But on the surface, it still sounds mostly altruistic, don't you think? But yeah, it had to have that Elon Musk style twist in there, didn't it? Just so you know that he's a dick. Number eight, the Diamond Match Company released the patent for non-toxic matches to the world. Once upon a time, a match was a remarkable piece of technology. It was fire you could form in seconds with nothing more than a quick moment of friction. Known flint needed nothing fancy at all. It wasn't the smoothest road traveled, however. Early matches in the 19th century were made from white phosphorus, and the horrible tales of how they mutilated or outright killed people who worked with it are not for the squeamish. Let's just say people's jaws fell off. In 1910, the Diamond Match Company patented a brand new kind of match. And how was this innovative, you ask? Well, it wasn't poisonous, not for nothing. But if you can make a product that people like that isn't poisonous when all other versions are poisonous, you just made a pretty good product and a almost guaranteed to have a monopoly on that product's market. And these new matches were considered to be so important that William Howard Taft, the President of the United States, personally asked the Diamond Match Company to give up the pattern. And they did so for, and I quote, humanity's sake. 
The result was widespread manufacturer and use of matches that finally didn't have to kill the people making them. Number seven, Jonas Salk refused to patent the polio vaccine. Hopefully people today still know the name Jonas Salk, born in 1940, he became a doctor in New York and studied viruses like the flu. He began working on a vaccine throughout the Second World War when he eventually switched gears to polio. He had some success and in 1955 he perfected a vaccine that proved effective in preventing polio altogether. Before Salk, about 16,000 people a year contracted polio, many of them suffering extreme pain, paralysis and more. Today people simply don't get the disease and it has effectively been eradicated because of Salk's vaccine. What people call Salk a miracle worker for what he'd done, he refused to patent the vaccine. He was not interested in profit, what he was interested in was making sure that everyone got vaccinated and that nobody ever got polio again, which, thanks to him, pretty much nobody in history since has had, with notable exceptions caused by other people who don't want to get vaccinated against horrible diseases. The comments on this one are going to be fun. Moving swiftly on. Number six, William Rotengun wouldn't patent x-rays. In physics, a rope gun is a unit of measure applied to X-rays and gamma rays. Exposure at a level of 400 rope gun is potentially lethal. The name comes to us from William Rotengun, the man who discovered X-rays back in 1895. And for a moment, imagine a world where this technology had never been seen or even imagined. How he felt when he put his hand in the tube of a contraption he'd made, blasted it with invisible energy he had discovered, and got an X-ray image of the bones in his hand for the first time. That image became an international sensation. A man of science, Rotogen, understood the potential benefits to what he had discovered. As such, he refused to take out a patent on X-ray generating technology. He wanted it to be free to use around the world for the benefit of all of humankind. Though he won the first ever Nobel Prize for Physics in 1901, he gave the money to his university and took no honours or awards for what he'd done. Legend. Number five, the inventors of insulin gave away their patent for a single US dollar. One of Canada's most famous citizens, Frederick Banting, was the man who discovered insulin and saved countless lives. Working in London, Ontario in 1923, when he finally made his discovery, he wanted no part in profiting from it or achieving any kind of fame. He refused to put his name on the patent at all. Banting was not alone, of course. He had colleagues who helped develop insulin, and two other men, James Collip and Charles Best, put their name on the pattern. Sounds like a case of stabbing a partner in the back, right? Well, not quite. They sold the patent to the University of Toronto for a single dollar. The consensus was that it was unethical for a doctor to profit off a discovery meant to save lives. Fast forward to today, and you could probably guess what we're going to say here. A vial of insulin that costs about $12 in Canada can cost several hundred dollars in the United States. So Banting's dream of insulin being free to everyone didn't actually work out as planned, but the formulations have improved and diabetics have a much better quality of life. So that's something, right? Number four, Ben Franklin refused to patent anything he made. When we talk about famous inventors from history, Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla are often top of the list, even though, you know, as people in the comments are gonna say, Edison stole most of his most famous inventions, but Ben Franklin is usually mentioned too. He invented things from the bifocals to catheters and swim fins, basically everything you need for a really weird party. Franklin patented none of his inventions, even when they were offered to him. Some of his inventions, like the Franklin stove and bifocals, certainly could have made him a lot of money. Well, that was not why he invented things. He once said, and I quote, that we enjoy great advantages from the inventions of others. We should be glad of an opportunity to serve others by any invention of our own, and we should do so freely and generously. Or in other words, everybody benefits when we all share. All ships rise with the tide and all that good stuff. Number three, the inventor of chicken nuggets gave the recipe away. Ah, oh, the humble chicken nugget. We eat about 2.3 billion chicken nuggets per year, so it's safe to say these golden bites are well liked. Just imagine what the patent on nugget technology would be worth had anyone wanted to take one out. Now, some people out there assume, quite wrongly, that the McDonald's Corporation was the inventor of nuggets, but the real genius behind nugget technology was a guy called Robert Baker. But why did he make nuggets, you ask? So chicken demand grew during World War II when other meat was pretty scarce, so poultry production went up. Post-war, however, meat wasn't being rationed, so people could eat pork and beef again, and the demand for chicken tanked. Chickens became impractical because roasting a whole one took time and you either needed a few to feed a family or you had too much to feed an individual. Baker's job then was to find a new way to eat chicken. He came up with a couple of ideas, including chicken wieners that never really caught on, but the moulded, breaded, ground white chicken idea was his true hit. 
but not right away. Because it wasn't until the 1970s when people started turning their back on red meat because it was considered unhealthy that new ways to eat chicken grew in demand. And that's when the nugget had its moment. It was thought to be less fatty, better for your heart and all that jazz. And as a result, it took off and continues to remain popular to this day. And of course, a chicken nugget isn't healthy, but people focus more on the chicken and less on the nugget and the rest is history. Baker, for his part, did the opposite of patenting his method of making nuggets. He mailed the recipe to hundreds of food production companies who presumably sat on it for several years before they realized, oh wow, people like this nugget of chicken. Let's go. Number two, Semyon Korsakov developed machine systems for information storage. The timeline for computers is long and oftentimes kind of dull. Early machines that used punch card systems for data storage are not nearly as exciting as modern gaming computers by any means, but they were a step in the path to what we have today. Semyon Korsakov was a Russian statistician in 1817 and became interested in the idea of, and I quote, machines for the comparisons of ideas. This took the form of a punch card system which helped search for information. In very, very rudimentary terms, he was setting the stage for modern artificial intelligence. His invention was announced in 1832 as a machine for comparing ideas. Korsakov thought the idea would be helpful to people, so he didn't bother seeking a pattern, instead making it freely available to anyone who wanted to use it. Sadly, the idea was mostly rejected since no one could see the benefit in using a machine to access a large amount of information. He could take a horse to water and all that jazz. Number one, daguerreotype technology was given free to the world except England. Rude. Louis Jacques Mande Daguerre was the inventor of one of the earliest types of photography, the daguerreotype. They were images on silver copper plates, and in 1939 they were revolutionary in their clarity. Daguerreotypes took the world by storm, and people all around the world were making them. Daguerre and France had made use of the technology free to the world, with one small notable exception. He took out a single patent in England, meaning everyone in the world but the English were free to use it. And because the English had to pay, again rude, it also prompted experimentation with novel forms of the technology which spurred the photo industry forward even more. But still, you've got to respect that hustle. So I hope everybody enjoyed this episode of Top 10s and found it informative, educating and all that good stuff. If you did, you can leave a like and a comment below with stuff you'd like us to cover in the future or comments and feedback for how we can improve these videos for you. So there's a spoiler saying get rid of me um, doesn't really work because I'm in it for the long haul, unless I'm not. In which case, that'll just be really funny. Either way, we appreciate everyone for tuning in and like, if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe for more. Follow us on our socials, check out our sister channels, um, Geographics and Biographics. The more videos on this channel, and as always, everyone out there, have the day you deserve. Cheers.